Well, good evening, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. It is Saturday, um, <coughs> the 1st of February, actually, and it's about 8.20 here at night. And uh, wanted to do a video update for you, give you the latest thinking on uh, the winter weather potentially headed our way next week. But we also, for some of us, for our southern counties along the Ohio River anyway, may have the potential for a little bit of, uh, of wintry weather on Sunday night as well. We'll go ahead and talk about this. Tonight's update is sponsored by High Voltage Mobile DJ Service. You can give Nathan a call at 630-9465 or visit him on the web at uh, djhighvoltage.com. And uh, they do a great job, so give them uh, a ring. Check their page out. You can see some pictures and other things of things they've done. And uh, tell them Southern Indiana Weather sent them, and thanks for supporting us. Okay, we've got a little bit of rain out there right now. It's as I promised you this morning on uh, the weather update. Not an all-day soaker, but we do have some rain moving in. As we widen this out, you can actually see I've got the precip type turned on, so you can see a little bit of freezing rain in the in the uh, pink sleet over here in the orange, and a little bit of snow in the in the white and blue shades over here as well. So, the wintry side of this is really staying more over over. Uh, uh, portions uh, well away from our area. Now there's a chance that uh, we'll see a little bit of this as this cold front actually moves through and uh, that, that it'll rapidly drop our temperatures. If I just go ahead and put uh, throw the temperature data on here you can see we're sitting here uh, in, in southern Indiana really uh, 48 here at the Huntingburg Airport, Evansville Airport's at 47 but you know you're already up to down to 41 here with some light rain at the uh, Washington Airport, 38 over here at uh, around the Lawrenceville Vincennes area. So you can see pretty quickly that cold front uh, is gonna is moving through. And if I just throw the winds on here, it's very evident where that cold front is. Uh, it's actually moved through uh, a lot of the area already. We've already got winds moving out of uh, the northwest, which is in indicative of that cold front already passing. Okay. So, uh, and, and once that cold front has passed through your area, you're going to start to drop uh, pretty rapidly. And it looks like we're going to go down to an overnight low somewhere around 30 tonight. Now, we'll talk about this system that's headed our way on, on, uh, on uh, Tuesday, because I know that's what's on everybody's minds. Here it is out here, and if I just go ahead, I don't know if I can see it on visible, uh, visible satellite here yet or not. Visible satellite looks like it's uh, pretty much just about gone. Um, I can put it on water vapor and you can see it as well. It's, uh, it's sort of, it's just now coming into view on this. Uh, here's the infrared satellite. Sometimes it shows more of the system than others. Sometimes uh, this satellite view will go all the way out to here. It's, it's not tonight for some reason. Uh, regardless though, you can see it's almost on shore. It looks like it will come on shore tomorrow. It's, it's a pretty decent sized low pressure system. It's actually going to track continuing down this way sort of go in a manner like this and uh, it will basically will uh, sort of fizzle out but then we'll uh, regenerate over the Texas region and then head on up our way so um, really we we don't have a tremendously great handle on the situation yet as I'm going to show you but I think by tomorrow evening once we get some data actually from this thing moving on shore we'll be able to get a little bit more of, of uh, a better handle on this don't forget, if you go to southernindianaweather.com and click on interactive radar, you can actually track uh, these showers and these wintery weather as it moves in. You can zoom out to a regional view. You can zoom out to the United States view. If you want to, you can click the plus button or just use your mouse and you can zoom in even right down to street level to see exactly what's going on. You can throw temperature data and the whole nine yards over you. It's a really cool tool, so please be sure to check that out. All right, <clears throat> let me talk with you, well, before we get into Tuesdays, let me just sort of talk about what we're going to experience tomorrow real quick. And uh, here's where we are right now. You know, if I can get this back out here. Here's where we are approximately uh, right now. And uh, you see here's the cold front. It's moving through the area. That cold front has moved through the area. And then watch what happens down here in the southern portions of our area. We got this, uh, this, this next little system spinning up. So that by Sunday night, uh, you see really it looks like Kentucky gets a decent little amount of a precipitation and it moves through. You see the blue shades are starting to move over us. There is a slight chance that some of this may move into our Indiana counties and bring us a little bit of light snow. I haven't really put this in the forecast much over the past few days because it has been staying all down towards southern Kentucky. There are indications that it wants to move up a little bit more. Here's what the NAM says about it. I need to back this up in time. 
I'm sh kind of showing this out of order a little bit, but here we are. Uh, here we are this afternoon. Okay, here we go. And here's the rain moving through, and then watch how this moves uh, on on uh, Sunday night down to our south, and it still looks like the bulk of it stays down there. But you actually notice here we are at the border of Indiana right here, and and you get just a little bit of light precipitation moving in here, and this this would potentially be in the form of snow. So uh, really, that uh, the NAM as far as the snow totals is, um, we'll talk about these in a minute. Uh, but the snow totals on the NAM is actually all that you see here in the southern part. Well, this is actually with this little system that's potentially uh, moving in tonight. So the NAM is pretty aggressive with some of its snow totals. I'm not sure that I completely uh, buy into this. But uh, really, uh, if you live south of I-64, I think you've got a shot tomorrow night at a little bit of precipitation. But I don't think it's going to be anything major. It looks like the largest uh, chunk of that precipitation, that snow, will stay south of us. All right, let's talk about Tuesday system because that's obviously the biggest system. Here it comes in. This is the GFS. This is the latest GFS that's in. Uh, the 7 p.m. model is processing now, so this is the one that initialized at 1 this afternoon. And we'll move this in here. We're at 1 p.m. Tuesday. Not a whole lot happening yet, but here by the time we move into 7 p.m., you notice we've got some sleet and freezing rain over southern Indiana. The pink is your freezing rain. The orange shades here are your sleet. So that's a nasty mix. And I want you to notice how this low ends up tracking. By the time you go into the overnight hours on Tuesday night, you notice it leaves us pretty much rain free, keeps us as freezing rain the entire time, then to snow on the back side of the system. So that is a scenario that we absolutely don't want, but that's what the latest model is, is painting for us. Go back in time, let's look at the latest few model runs, and you see uh, the model run that initialized at 7 a.m. this morning. Uh, what you can see is it kind of had the battle lines clearly drawn over us. A little bit of, of rain here, a little bit of, uh, of uh, freezing rain here. Didn't have the sleep pictured with this one. Again, here you go with uh, one model run earlier. This was 1 a.m. this morning, and this is sort of a freezing rain and snow battle line now. You get the picture that uh, we're going to be in an area that we're just going to have to fight to uh, to see what this is going to be. Um, but here and here is the one that initialized at seven o'clock last night. And you see it's got a little bit of rain in here, but then again a sleet freezing rain mix for portions of our area. So what can you take out of this? Well, what you can take out of this is that we've got a mess on our hands coming for Tuesday night and. Uh, uh, really, the exact track of this low is going to be everything, but not only the track of this low, but how deep this low gets. All right, let me just back up here. Notice, notice how broad this is. The low usually is around in the center of them, so the low would be somewhere over in here. And it's only a 10, 10 millibar low. That's not a very strong low. Uh, so look at this one, though, a little bit stronger of a low. It, it's a little bit tighter of a gradient here. Um, this would be... Um, well, you got a 10, 16, so here's 14, 12. Here's your 10 right here, 10, 8. This would be a 10, 06 millibar low, so a much stronger low than what this is. Because of that, you've got a little bit of rain working in. You see where I'm going with this. Here's a 10, 04 low. That should be a stronger, even stronger low. Should be moving more rain in, but the position is a little bit more to the west. And here you go with this one as well. You've got a, a 10.06 low here, and you've got a little bit of rain moving in. So really, the positioning on this thing and how strong it is is going to be everything. If the low ends up taking a track more like this, then we're going to end up with a little bit more of a rain in this area than we are freezing rain. But if the track ends up taking uh, more like this, as some of them have, then we're going to be on the dividing lines for freezing rain. And just right now, unfortunately, there is no way to really... Uh, know exactly what's going to happen with this system because it is not even on shore yet. I showed you where it was at over California. Once it moves on shore, hopefully tomorrow we'll start to have a little bit better of a handle on what it's going to be. But as it stands right now, nothing really much has changed since yesterday. Really, it looks like we're going to be somewhere over southern Indiana is going to set up that battle line between rain and freezing rain at this point. Now, all the models on the back side of the system do show a little bit of, of snow. Before I get to that, though, let me show you quickly ice precipitation and what we could be looking at with this. Look up here, and what you're seeing here is potential accumulations through Wednesday at 1 uh, p.m. And um, essentially what you've got here, just take a look at it. Here's your freezing rain potential right here. and um, <coughs> You start off in these light purple colors being a hundredth of an inch, and then the pink colors go up from a tenth to a quarter inch, and, and even on. It's hard to tell by coloring exactly what you've got here, and because it's so small. But essentially, you've got at least a tenth of an inch of ice accumulation with this coming up. That's not good if this pans out. 
and some of us even get a little bit of a of an of a sleet accumulation as well mixed in along with that so uh, not not good we're going to have to watch out that out for that very clearly uh, hopefully that will change and just become an all rain event for us because i really don't want the freezing rain i don't think anyone does rain would just be much better if we end up with uh, rain going to freezing rain that would be a little bit better too because it would cut down but if it stays all freezing rain we're going to be in for some, what looks like could be a potentially big event we're going to have to watch this closely temperatures are going to be everything the gfs starts us out on tuesday morning <coughs> excuse me in the upper 20s warms us up to near freezing as we go notice some of us stay below freezing the entire time and then very quickly during the evening hours we move into uh, the low 20s into the low 30s and then down into the 20s overnight so let's talk about snow accumulations with the GFS as well. We'll start with start with tomorrow and see what we're going to do. Notice it's notice the GFS is painting the potential for Sunday night for a little bit of snow south of I-64 basically, and then there you see the significant snows more through here. By the time Tuesday comes in, the GFS is actually painting a little bit of snow potentially on the backside of this system as well for us. So. Um, in addition to some ice accumulation potentially we may have a, a two or three inch accumulation possibly over that freezing rain so that's that's going to make for a nasty mess too that means travel is going to be uh, pretty nasty now it's not uh, not significant snow totals like maybe you see up here towards central indiana uh, but uh, any snow over freezing rain is going to be absolutely nasty real quick i just want to show you some others the canadian is in a very similar vein to it but it's actually a little colder than the gfs Notice the low here is actually more along the Ashland, Kentucky area for its center as it tracks up more along this way. That would put us more into a snowier and colder zone. Uh, so that would, that would potentially get us more into the wintry side uh, of things. It actually, if we look at the temperatures on the Canadian, it pretty much keeps us below freezing at or below freezing the entire time in the area. And that's why you get more of a chance of snow accumulation with this. Uh, the snow accumulation here that you see, again, uh, this is what would fall on Sunday night. But really from uh, this point here uh, onward, you would have the snow accumulation with the Canadians. So um, <coughs> we'll have to, we'll have to uh, watch out for that and just see whether this trends further south anymore or not. Um, and, and remember, the first blues start the two-inch accumulation. So pretty much everybody underneath of the Canadian solution would end up getting uh, a little bit of accumulation out of this. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the Euro model as well, notice that it's not as strong on the Euro model. Well, it is actually stronger than the GF is on the Euro model, uh, but notice the position of it is a lot, a lot closer towards uh, the Canadian solution. It ends up tracking like this, so that would give us a significant more amount of snow as well. If we put this on, uh, keep in mind some of these snow totals down over Kentucky is from the event that's going to happen on Sunday night as well. But it's talking several inches over our area right now the euro model is the outlier on this and uh, i tend to favor the gfs more than i do the canadian or the euro at this point for the simple fact that uh, with a deepening low like this i, I really just uh, think that low is going to track closer towards us we've seen that all season with the deepening low coming from texas so uh, history sort of speaks for itself nam model really quickly i just want to show you is actually even warmer for us if you don't want the snow or the freezing rain at all vote for the nam NAM actually takes the low through central Indiana and moves it out. So we would get some flurries on the back side of the system and virtually nothing else. If we talk about NAM accumulation, the NAM gives us a south of I-64 potential for some accumulation tonight, but then keeps the heavy accumulating snows from Indianapolis north and just some dusting to half an inch, an inch maybe, uh, for those of us here in southern Indiana on this system on Tuesday. The NAM, that's what's on the back side. It keeps us mostly rain, all right? So that's, uh, that's what the NAM has to say about this. And then real quick, I just want to show you as you go throughout here, here we are with the system on Wednesday. We do are tracking another system potentially for next weekend as well. And uh, notice the low is in a very similar path to this. So uh, yeah, we're going to have another one that we may have to deal with as well. Hopefully that won't be the same result of freezing rain. But uh, right now, we're just going to put it on our radar screen. It's way too early to talk with any depth about it. And as I put this forward into motion over time, here we are on Thursday the 13th, and uh, you see yet another system potentially moving in, and uh, more in, in the works beyond that as well, so a very active period setting up. Go to southernindianaweather.com. You can get the updated forecast. I won't go through all of it uh, tonight because of time, but again, I'm, I'm saying a wintry mix of sleet, freezing rain, and rain likely somewhere that rain line and freezing lane changeover line 
<laughs> it's going to set up over us, folks. We just don't know where at. We'll be able to fine-tune that a little bit more, hopefully tomorrow and Monday. All right, that's it for tonight's video. We'll have another one of these for you tomorrow evening for Southern Indiana weather.